the man looks like? <laughs> uh, Self-improvement is masturbation. It's a trap! When I first heard this idea that self-improvement could make you miserable, I shrugged it off. Pfft, what a loser. He just failed. And I was actually right. Most people that say self-improvement is miserable are actually the ones who gave up in life. But this video is not about them. It's about how self-improvement can turn from something positive to something toxic. And I believe almost everybody falls in this trap eventually. Hello brother, my name is Dennis. I make authentic videos that help you improve yourself and live a life of purpose. Today, I'm going to help you escape the most common trap of self-improvement and actually replace it with something else. Chapter one, the trap. The problem of self-improvement is simple. It is inherently selfish. You are focused on yourself throughout the whole time. Now you might think that there is nothing wrong with that, but this self-centeredness creates two massive problems. First, you become incredibly unhappy. See, by definition, if your main goal is to self-improve, then that means that something must be wrong with you. This is how your brain sees it. As long as you're focusing on the self, you can never be happy. You can never let yourself be happy. You become self-conscious in everything you do. You start overthinking and you start overanalyzing your every single move and action. You cease to enjoy your life because you have this constant strain of having to be perfect. But this strain completely eliminates your enjoyment from life. Enjoyable life experiences come from something called a flow state. It's a state in which you forget about everything else and just focus on the experience you're living. The reason video games are enjoyable is because they're designed to make you fall in this flow state. If you've ever had a great conversation with somebody where you felt time flew by, you were in a flow state. This is the most enjoyable experience in life. But it is impossible to experience when you are self-conscious. You can't get into a deep conversation if you're thinking whether your body language is right or whether you speak properly. The problem with self-improvement is that it makes you self-conscious all the time about everything you do because you're trying to be perfect, which literally prevents you from experiencing the joy and getting into a flow state when you do anything. You got into self-improvement to enjoy life more, but it literally sucks the joy out of life. You are improved, but you aren't happier. Second, ironically, you actually make less progress. No great man ever became great by focusing on himself. What you think, Caesar Augustus was focused on himself? No, he had an empire to rule. You think Jesus Christ was thinking about himself? No, he had people to save and help. You think Elon Musk thinks about improving himself? No, he has companies to run. Yourself will always be a weak motivator. It doesn't make you push hard. You need a motivating force outside of yourself. You probably think that humans are inherently selfish, but that's not really true. For the entirety of human history, we have only found the meaning outside of ourselves. People find meaning in God, family or a mission higher than themselves. Working on yourself is an incredibly weak motivator compared to that and you'll be annihilated by someone who finds meaning and is working on something higher than himself. You think you're ever gonna beat somebody who believes he's doing God's work? or he's fighting for you know, the survival of his family, or he's on his lifelong mission, ordained to him by destiny. You think you're gonna beat men like that with your little self-improvement, with your little meditations and going to the gym? No, you can't beat such men like that. So what can you do instead? Chapter two, purpose. Instead of doing self-improvement, you need to find a purpose for your life. A purpose is the mission of your life beyond yourself. What do you want to do with your life? A purpose should be both something you 
enjoy doing, you need to love it. And it should also help others live a better life. This is how it's meaningful and enjoyable. And it's 10 times better than self-improvement. But a purpose cannot be selfish because you fall into self-centeredness again and you cease to enjoy your life just like with self-improvement. So having a purpose works for three reasons. First, it's actually enjoyable. Yes, when you don't think of yourself constantly, you can allow yourself to enjoy life again. You suddenly become good enough and your problems seem insignificant compared to the problems of your purpose. On a day-to-day -day basis, you stop thinking of yourself and you start thinking of how to achieve your external goals. Second, it is actually motivating. When you have a mission higher than yourself, you actually want to get out of bed and work on it. It's exciting. You almost feel like you're in a movie and you're working on your mission every single day. Life becomes meaningful and you seemingly start having ceaseless energy, ceaseless motivation. Your little shitty moments of doubt or demotivation stop mattering since now you have to take responsibility of something higher than yourself, a purpose. Third, you still get the benefits of self-improvement, but more. See, in order to actually start achieving your purpose and your external goals, you have to better yourself internally. First, you have to become he who can achieve his purpose. I'm making a vlog series right now called Life of Purpose. In this vlog series, I'm showing you how I'm trying to become he who can with my failures and my successes and everything day-to-day -day life. You need to become he who can to achieve your purpose before you can do it. So naturally, you actually have to improve. But this improvement happens without the constant restraint of thinking of yourself. Self-improvement merely becomes the vehicle which can get you to your actual true goals of the purpose. I found my purpose roughly six months ago. In those six months, I have evolved and leveled up as a man 10 times more than my previous four years of self-improvement. In the four years before, all I did was I had a body transformation and really that's it. I was so inconsistent and undisciplined that I didn't make much progress. Then I find my purpose around six months ago and now I have discipline 90% of the time since then. I've made more progress on my fitness journey, on my confidence and social skills, on learning YouTube, on being masculine. All the while, I was focused not on myself, but on my purpose. My purpose forced me to start becoming he who can, a more confident, a better man. And the great thing about that is that for the first time, I'm actually enjoying life. I'm not so fucking focused on myself. Stop self-improvement. It makes you miserable. Find your purpose instead and focus on it and you'll make more progress and faster progress while also being happier. But how do you find your purpose? Chapter 3. Actionable step. Finding your purpose is a game of trial and error. You cannot possibly know it immediately, but the only way to find it is to actually try to find it. This is a skill. You have to try multiple times before you get to the right answer. So, how do you develop this skill? Open a journal and write down your life plan. What will you do from now on until your literal death? If you have no idea, then you are the exact type of person who needs to do this practice. Write in phases what you want to accomplish. Phase one is now, phase two is in five years, and so on and so forth. Each phase should be connected and make sense. The phases should lead up to your purpose, aka the big thing you want to accomplish with your life, the mission of your life. This should be ambitious, but also realistic, okay? If it's not ambitious, it won't motivate you on a day-to-day -day basis. But if it's not realistic, it will give you anxiety and make you self-conscious, just like self-improvement. Here is an example of someone who loves martial arts and wants to make that his purpose. Phase one, learn the basics of martial arts. 
Phase 2. Start competing and winning amateur fights. Phase 3. Find a top gym and become a professional. Phase 4. Master martial arts and keep winning fights. Phase 5. Enter the UFC. Phase 6. Market yourself, create a brand and win a UFC title. Phase 7. Keep fighting until retirement while stacking cash. Phase 8. Become a shareholder of the UFC. Phase 9. Work with the company. Now, this would not be realistic at all for someone who is 25 years old and never trained anything in their life. Right? They, they, they're too old, they're never gonna win a UFC title. If your purpose is not realistic, you're just lying to yourself. But this would be realistic for an 18 year old who is already somewhat of an athlete and is interested in MMA. I want you to bear this in mind, you will probably change your initial purpose and phases 50 to 100 times before you find what you actually want to do with your life. Whatever you write initially will almost have nothing to do with what ends up as your actual purpose. But that's fine because by a process of elimination over the course of let's say one to two years, you find your true purpose in life, which is amazing because most people never actually find their true purpose. But if something feels demotivating or makes you anxious, then that means you need to change something. You need to change something about your purpose, about your faces. Your purpose should feel like the most natural and realistic thing in the world and you should be motivated to achieve everything. Congratulations. Now you beat all the self-improvement pussies in life. If you want me to coach you one-on-one, -on -one, check out the link in the description. Join the movement, become a purposeful man, and remember, if you don't achieve your purpose, nobody will. Be ruthless. Now you know what this means. You need to achieve your purpose. Nobody will do it for you. Fuck self-improvement. Now you know what it means. Be motherfucking ruthless.